proper right handed. And then while he's sitting on your left hand, you can sign important documents. <laughs> <laughs> you can tie a falconer's knot with one hand. You can ride a horse. And that's why in medieval times, when you see paintings and tapestries, they're usually carrying the bird on their left hand. If you're left-handed, you carry it on your right. I'm left-handed, but the problem with falconry gloves is you can only buy one. You can't buy them in pairs. And you can buy the left-handed ones off the peg. The right-handed ones have to be specially made. And because of this, they're more expensive. And because I'm cheap, I've learned to do everything with my right hand. <laughs> And while he's sitting on your hand, he's looking round to see if there's anything else. <laughs> yeah, he likes catching hairs. <laughs> now you know why my hair's gone white. <laughs> yeah, it's from Douglas sitting on my head doing dropping. <laughs> he landed on my head one day and this lady screamed. She said, does it hurt when he does that? I said, yeah, but I'm really tough. <laughs> when he lands on my head, he doesn't grip, and it's not unusual behaviour for Harris hawks, and that's because they live in desert scrub areas full of cactus and trees. And often a Harris hawk will land on a saguaro cactus, the big cactuses you see in cowboy films. And uh, another one will come up behind and land on its back, and you can have five, even six stories of Harris Hawks all perched on top of one another. You have to feel sorry for the one on the bottom <laughs> with all those prickles. It's a delicate little eater. Or as his brother just tries to eat it as quickly as possible, he mantles with his wings and tail around the food to protect it. It's just a more selfish bird. This one will come flying in and land on your hand from miles away. His brother won't do that. He'll just come diving in and either try and snatch the food off your hand or hit it with his, fit, with his foot. So um, you couldn't get two more birds that are different. And this one I like to think is a bit more attractive than his brother. But don't let his brother get the sympathy vote because he couldn't care less. <laughs> His brother's called Dusty because he likes to have a dust bath in the sand. So he's got a sandy face, he's got a sandy chest. He's never as clean looking as this one. The moment he was just checking out that gull that's soaring around up in the clouds there. Anything up like that soaring he'll always keep an eye on because uh, you have to keep an eye on the competition and that's what he's watching now. Not all owls are the same. But one day he was sitting on the post over there and a stoke chased a rabbit across the field and Otto joined in. He was chasing the stoke. The stoke was chasing the rabbit. Here, do you want your bone back? Mm. It's like a spoiled kid, isn't it? Yeah, you've killed it now. Lucy, you like that? Don't you wish you could do that? <laughs> <laughs> Think of all the KFC ads you could do. <laughs> It'd be brilliant when you just pick up a drumstick and swallow it and then make some pleasantry about how wonderful KFC is. You'd win awards with an ad like that. <laughs> Although he always gets thrown out of KFC because people go off their feet and start downing drumsticks. Do you want another one? Hold on. <laughs> It's all 
all yours. No one's going to nick them. <laughs> <laughs> he always gets overexcited when you give him food because he can't believe you don't want that <laughs> Anyway, the stoat chased the rabbit, but he was chasing the stoat. And they vanished into the brambles and it went very quiet. And then the little rabbit ran out across the field, under the benches, through people's legs, and hid in the long grass over there. I mean, how many can he swallow? If I'd done that, I'd be right, lying on my back with my feet in the air the following day. But he's, he's swallowed hundreds of drumstick bones. He's never had a problem. He never gets indigestion. He regurgitates the bone the following day, but all the meat's gone. And he'll digest some of the calcium out of the bone and some of the marrow. But often the following day, he crunches the bone up to get more marrow out of it. So he'll often eat a bone in Reminds me of my friend, he had a girlfriend called Chuck. Just as it would be in the wild. This time I'll let him catch it. Ooh. And once he's caught the lure, he doesn't start eating straight away. This is when falcons are vulnerable. When they're hunting, they're often watched by other birds of prey. And uh, while they're on the ground, other birds of prey will fly in and not only steal their meal, but if they can, they grab the falcon and get two meals for the price of one. Mm. He can spend five, ten minutes scanning the skies before he'll start to feed. He's very shy and nervous when he's just caught something. The closest you'll ever get to knowing what it's like to be a falcon when he's just caught something is when you've just been to a cash machine and taken some money out. <laughs> and you find yourself looking round to see if there's any dodgy looking characters. <laughs> And I can see a few today. <laughs> <laughs> and the hardest part of training a falcon is not getting it to come back, but getting it to sit quietly so you can pick it up again. In the beginning, they just see you as another predator coming in to attack or to rob them. Think about flying away. Once they understand that you're not a predator, Because they feel more secure there than they do in the middle of a field where they're visible. 